Greetings and welcome to a new video about MOSFET differential amplifiers. This is our example number four. In example, we will use the full transistor current source configuration here to create this required tail current. We have discussed this circuit in the other playlist about IC biasing, so using the transistor to create current sources. So you can look in this uh, playlist to learn more about that. I will just use it here specifically for our differential amplifier design. Of course, we will see that step by step in our calculation also where you find this in SPICE simulations. So this is the circuit. We have here the differential pair again. We use five n-channel enhancement type MOSFETs. The parameters for the MOSFETs are shown here. You see the threshold voltage. Each of them are 0.4 volts. The K sub n, the smaller the K sub n, which is the process parameter, is 50 for the M1 and M2, 50 milliamps per square volts. For the other, other three, M3 up to M5, it is 50 micro or 0.05 milliamps per square volts. The channel length modulation for M1 and M2 is 0.01. That's also valid for M3, same. But for M4 and M5, it is zero. What we have given is the tail current IX here, which is also the drain current of M3, is 60 microamps, and the reference current here is 100 microamps. And VDE and VSS is two and a minus two volts. And RD here in this case is five kilo ohms. And the design of this circuit is done as said before in the playlist where we discussed the transistor current sources. So we would like to know three things here, the balanced differential mode voltage gain, balance common mode voltage gain, also the balanced common mode rejection ratio. This is calculated easily once we have the results from A and B. Okay, let's do the solutions. First, the calculation part. First, I designate the currents I have that's already given here in the simulator circuit, but uh, let's designate it clearly. IRF here, that is an IX here, which is our tail current. And since this source and the other one the source one and source two currents are here and we know that the gate currents are zero that is important uh, for the future calculations the drain current of m1 is equal to the source current current of m1 and the drain current of m2 is equal to the source current of m2 so it is a symmetric device now we can say that the drain currents of m1 and m2 will split in equal parts because they are in this case biased at the same potential and this drain, the tail current here will be going for 50% that way and 50% that way in the DC analysis. So we can say ID1 is equal to ID2, is equal to ID3 over 2 or IX over 2. And since IX or the tail current must be 60 microamps, we have now a 30 microamps. Now M1 and M2 are matched, that's all shown here, so that is equal to each other. And they are by the same potential because this voltage between gate and source is exact same as the gate and source here at DC. So biasing means it really DC only. We can say that the transconductance of M1 and also the transconduction of M2, GM1 and GM2 are equal to each other. So we can define then just one GM, that's called as just GM without the numbers, and call that and use that for the next steps in our calculations. Now, GM itself is equal to 2 times the KN, 1 or 2, times the ID, 1 or 2, depending on which transfer you want to take. It doesn't matter, actually. So this is the formula we need to use. But the KN here, the capital letter KN, has a relationship with this smaller the KN prime, which is given by this. You see, actually, F0, uh, 1 over 2 here is the is a scaling. And there's also a ratio of the W over L. In this case, you see here the multiplication factor, 1, that's also the same here. And here, for example, this is 0 0.51, etc., because there's a milli here. Is here 25 and also here 14.77. Now, those numbers means actually how much you need to multiply the W over L for each transistor. In this case, this is a unit transistor. There's also a unit transistor. That means W over L here is 1. Kn prime is here 50 milliamps per square volt. So now, when you substitute the values for Kn prime and also W over L as the multiplication factor, which is 1, then we have the following result, which is 25 milliamps per square volts. This is, by the way, the same for the M2 also. So you can say Kn1 is equal to Kn2. Now, we can now use that to calculate the transconductance. And we also know that ID1 is 30 microamps. 
and you get here 1.732 milli siemens okay now we can calculate the first uh, unknown here which is the differential mode balance differential mode voltage gain that's given by this expression which is vod over vid minus gm times the impedance looking here from here to the nose for example if you had no channel length modulation the load must be then only rd but in this case we have also the channel length modulation for m1 that means you also need to take into account this small letter r01 that means this needs to be calculated because of the channel length modulation that will be then in effect parallel with that rd so that is then given by this expression so the effect of channel length modulation here which is similar to the early voltage we know from the bgds that is given by this expression we need here the channel length modulation parameter value which is 0.01 .01. but we also need the vds1 which is a drain to source voltage now this is not calculated here most of the time this one over lambda one is larger much much larger than this vds1 so we can say let's ignore that for a moment and then just approximate this as 1 over lambda 1 over id1 and id1 here is a drain current of m1 which is at dc so we just do then 1 over the 0 0.01 over the 30 micro you get here 3.33 mega ohm so close to that value if you take this into account and also really calculate it i've done that in separately as a note you get here maybe 3.4 mega ohm so a small difference but there is there is a difference but this is good enough for most cases then we can say rd is known and r01 is known now and gm we just calculated also here so we can just calculate this and this will give us minus 8.6548 so almost minus 8.65 okay the next one is the common mode voltage gain with for balance now we know this is the single uh, and that uh, common mode voltage gain because we only look at the vo1 and over the common mode input then we need to have the common mode input here but we know that this is then single ended output now if you look at the vo1 or the vo2 doesn't matter that difference will be then exactly equal to uh, zero so that means we only look at vo1 or vo2 that's an actual definition but before we move on let's also discuss what this capital letter r always that is the impedance looking at the drain node of m3 which is given by this and this looking here down in the drain node of m3 you look at the r03 as we have similar for r m1 for r01 now as said before vo1 is equal to vo2 and that is defined as the output common mode voltage then we can express the single-ended common mode voltage as the balanced common mode voltage gain and that's then given by this expression again with a minus sign for inversion and this ro needs to be calculated now and you see here in the numerator the expression is the same as for the balanced differential mode voltage gain so the larger this ro is the smaller this value will be and that is better for our common mode rejection ratio so the ro3 let's do that first again similar formula for ro3 as we had for ro1 and again we don't know we haven't calculated vda3 here we can do that but it will take some time so and we know most of the cases that one over the lambda3 is much much larger than the vds3 so we can ignore this part in the numerator so we can say it's approximately this one and that will give you 1.67 mega ohms so actually half of this ro1 now that means ro capital letter ro will be then 1.67 mega ohms and we can now substitute this in here we already know the gm we also know rd ro1 so everything substituted here will give you minus 0 0.00149 so approximately minus 0 0.0015 so you see that compared to the differential mode gain which is this in blue it's much much smaller here for this red one and that's also what we actually want so we want to make this ratio large enough now now the balance common mode rejection ratio which is a ratio between the differential mode gain and the common mode gain in a balanced configuration we know these two values from a and b the substitute that will give, give you uh, 5804 in db will be then 
75.3 dB, which is moderate, so this is actually a nice number. So let's see first the simulation results. First, starting with the DC analysis is for the differential mode circuit, the left side and the right side for the common mode circuit. You actually see here that the common mode signal given applied at the same uh, for, for gate, so you actually get at the gate of M1 and M2 at the same signal. But in the DC conditions, you see actually this is 100 microamps as we wanted, and this is approximately 600 microamps, so really close to. And that's also the same for the common mode circuit. What we also see is that the 600 microamps they will split equally here because ID1 and ID2 are exact same and very close to the 30 microamps. It's similar also for the common mode, so we can say this is checked. Now let's now move on to the transient response. So these are the values we have calculated for the differential mode and the common mode gain. This is the plot, and you see this for the differential mode, and we have here differential mode input voltage, if which is given in blue, and this is the differential mode output voltage, which is given in red. Now, when you do now the output divided by the input, the peak peak value of the output divided by the peak peak value of the input is shown here, so 173.06 millivolts peak peak over 20 millivolts peak peak will give you minus 8.653 as the gain differential mode voltage gain, which is close to what we had, so this is perfect. Now let's also look at the common mode operation. Now this is again the plot for the common mode operation. And now the common mode voltage again, again is in pink or in this light green is our output, so VO1 or VO2 doesn't matter. You see also the inversion, the phase inversion, that's why we have this minus sign here. And if I now label here, the maximum and the minimum, and the difference here is here 2.953 milli, so it means peak to peak value of this pink, so the output, this is the drain of M1, will be 2.953 millivolts. For the apply, 2 volts peak peak. So if I calculate that, that's actually shown here, will get you minus 0 0.00148, which is very close to what we have calculated, so this is also fine. So this is actually our example considering the differential mode uh, gain, then the common mode gain and also the common mode rejection ratio for this MOSFET differential amplifier having the current source using only transistors in this case. If you have any questions, comments about this example, please let me know and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. See you next time in another video.